I'm Thabiti Anyabwile, and uh, you're on the front porch, and we have on the porch with us uh, my brother Louis Love, uh, senior pastor of New Life Fellowship Church in Vernon Hills, Illinois, and uh, today we've got Anthony J. Carter, mm. uh, senior pastor at East Point Church in Atlanta, Georgia, man. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, man. Always <laughs> good to hang out with you, brother. Yeah, man, likewise. First yeah. of all, thank you for your ministry, man. Yeah. Uh, you just, the Lord's using in wonderful ways to encourage his church mm -hmm. and his people, both your, your preaching, your writing, um, speaking outside of your church uh, as well, man. So we just we give God praise for uh, the way he's using you, brother. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. man. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. So tell us, before we get to the book, tell us a little bit about East Point Church. Uh, well, it's located in East Point, Georgia, which is um, just a uh, community over from Atlanta. It has... Um, a city feel to it because it's so close to Atlanta, but then again, it has a small town feel because it's not exactly in Atlanta mm -hmm. proper. Uh, um, but it's a small community, but um, a growing one. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. God. Praise and you encouraged with the labor there? I am, man. We planted a church about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, over these five years, we've seen God do some wonderful things mm -hmm. and, and growing uh, the church, both numerically and, uh, and spiritually, mm -hmm. uh, but even more so just a, a work in my own life and, and mm -hmm. the Lord um, mm -hmm. really teaching me more about me mm -hmm. and uh, dependence upon him. Mm -hmm. You know, it has been wonderful for me. I told our, our people not long ago, if the Lord would delight to, uh, to end the ministry of East Point Church after these five years, mm -hmm. you know, I would have no regrets. It has been mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. wonderful Wonderful experience. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise yeah. God, brother. Great blessing. Yeah. But Lou and I want to kick it with you a little bit about your book, man. Book, man. Yeah. It's called Blood oh. Work. Yeah. How the blood of Christ accomplishes our salvation. Man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So give us give us the book in a nutshell. What's your burden in writing this book? My burden is that um, we, the church has been traditioned by songs about the blood. You know, uh, we sing about the blood of Christ frequently. Mm. Um, we even uh, talk about the blood regularly when we come to the Lord's table. Mm. But I wonder if we have really contemplated all that the Bible really says that the blood of Christ accomplishes mm. for us. Mm. And when you begin to look at the scriptures and to see how often the Bible refers to the blood of Christ, you see that um, at the very core and the heart of the salvation as accomplished for us in mm. Christ, the Bible makes mention that it is through his blood mm. that our salvation has been uh, has been wrought. Mm. Mm. Uh, and mm. so that's really the gist of the book is looking at the various aspects of our salvation and seeing that the blood actually relates almost every one of those aspects um, to us through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God, man. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting that we, we sing about the blood all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, blood shall never lose its power. Yeah. You know, all, all that good stuff. Yeah. And, and yet, that, if we're not careful, that can just be a metaphor yeah. that rests lightly in terms of our own understanding. Yeah. Uh, and so as you, as you were writing this and thinking about um, all that the blood accomplishes, yeah. unpack some of that for us. So what, what does the blood accomplish? Well, I think the first thing we probably ought to do is kind of understand what we mean by the blood of Christ. Because I think a lot of times we sing about the blood and um, we're not really catching uh, the metaphor as it is meant in, in Scripture. Mm. We're not talking about that red substance that's running through mm. Christ's mm. vein, mm. literally <laughs> there. Mm. Uh, but we're talking about what that blood stood for. And that is the life of Christ poured out unto death. Mm. So we're talking about the atoning sacrifice of Christ, mm. his life and his death poured out mm -hmm. unto us for salvation. Mm. So we're not just simply talking about the substance mm. that is in Christ's mm. body, though that was real blood. Mm. It was just that mm. blood. Mm. But the blood that actually um, the Bible is referring to is used in a metaphoric sense concerning the life and death of Jesus poured out for the salvation of sinners. Mm -hmm. you know? And that, um, that blood, the Bible says, accomplishes for us so many things. It accomplishes our justification. We have been justified mm -hmm. by his blood. We have been uh, purchased by his mm -hmm. blood, as mm -hmm. Paul says in, in Acts chapter 20. We have been uh, redeemed 
by his blood. He says in Ephesians chapter one, we have uh, peace through his blood. We have been brought near mm -hmm. by his blood mm -hmm. in Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter yeah. two, yeah. Yeah. you know, and on and on. We have been sanctified by his blood. We have mm -hmm. our consciences cleansed mm -hmm. by his blood all the way to Revelation. And in chapter one, we, we told that we have been freed from all of our sins mm -hmm. by his blood mm -hmm. and on and on. So the, Bible, uh, the book actually takes up um, those various topics one by one in short, concise, but hopefully um, helpful and penetrating mm -hmm. uh, chapters mm -hmm. and just examining each mm -hmm. one of those aspects individually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. Seems yeah. like, uh, so the book, it's, it's, it's evangelistic then, right? There is, a, there, like, there is yeah. evangelistic uh, uh, tinge to it, um, particularly when you get to the, to the end. Um, yeah. But in each of the chapters, um, there is a sense of calling people mm. to know that there is only one way mm. to be right with mm. God, and mm. that is through the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's only way to find mm. eternal life and entrance into heaven and the presence of God. It is through the blood of Christ. Mm. And so it's not our own works. It's not what we have done. You know, it's not the shedding of our own blood, mm. but it must be the fact that Christ has shed his blood and you and I are trusting in that finished mm -hmm. work of Christ and in that finished work of Christ alone. Mm. Yeah. So, so when you wrote the book, was there an audience in mind? I know you mentioned the different songs. Yeah. Is there an audience that you have in mind? I know it's for the greater audience, but was yeah. there somebody you were thinking about in your head that really needs to know this information? Yeah, me primarily. Yeah, okay. mm. As I was uh, <laughs> reflecting right. on right. these things, and I figured right. that uh, if, it's, uh, if it's encouraging to me, which mm. that, that's how I tend to write, uh, if it's encouraging to me, then I perceive that it's probably going to be encouraging to my congregation mm -hmm. because basically we're in the kind of the same, same place. Thing, yeah. And if it's encouraging to my congregation, then uh, by God's grace, perhaps it will be encouraging to the, to the body mm. at, at large. So mm. when I write, I primary one, have my own mm. kind of sanctification and understanding and growth in mind. Mm. But then I write primarily to my congregation. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of the people who right, are sitting right. in my congregation. So that That's if that good, book yeah. doesn't get any, it doesn't get read anywhere else, mm. you know, it'll get read in our congregation. Mm. And beyond that, if God is pleased, that the greater church would um, mm -hmm. be pleased to mm -hmm. get something edifying and encouragement from it, then uh, mm -hmm. praise God. So, yeah. so in that sense, I mean, that's a really wonderful way to approach writing. It yeah. is. In that sense, you approach your writing very pastorally. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah try. And, and not merely academically or theologically, but yeah, with particular people yeah. in view. And that's helpful. Yeah. Louis, you, you're always talking about conversations you're having in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. And Tony's trying to help people understand that, you know, we're not just talking literally about physical blood, right, right. But, but what the blood sort of, um, as a metaphor, yeah, achieves for us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in the, in the barbershop, man, when I mean, you hear people talk about the blood and things of that sort, what are you hearing and, and how does this connect to this kind of book and topic? You know, it's, 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 it's kind of confusing at, at, at times because it, it's, it's almost like they are referring to the actual liquid. Mm. Mm. because things are, um, if you make a mistake, it's covered by the blood. Mm. Yeah. So it's like something just comes over and covers your mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. um, uh, you make a bad decision, don't worry about it because it's under the blood mm. and things like that, right? Yeah. So you hear, the, you hear that, that kind of talk, and then you, um, you don't really hear the result of, of, of Christ's death, mm. what, what's accomplished um, by his death, mm. you know, um, the, the sanctification, the, the cleansing. Mm. Um, you don't hear that. Mm -hmm. and that's, so I'm taking the book to the barbershop, right? Because mm -hmm. it stop a lot of arguments. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, people, I'm going to put it, I'm going to stack it up. Because, you know, I, we, I've done it, I've been doing it now for about five, ten years, five, six years, just asking the question, you know, what has is, what is Christ accomplished? What, what does he mean? And I've got to be honest with you, brothers. I, I've mm -hmm. never received a biblical answer. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm from people who are um, faithful, church-going people. Mm -hmm. They're in church all the time. They're involved in church activities. They're mm -hmm. in the choir, they're ushers, go to Bible study and Sunday school, and they still they don't have a clear understanding of what Christ has accomplished by his death wow. for us. So when, when you think about that kind of situation, because almost in any community, you're going to have a lot of folk religion, sure. right. right? You're going to have a lot of nominal Christianity. That's, sure. that's going to be true in any any swath of the world, really, right, right. Uh, and, and any religion, uh, really. Um, so when you think about that part of the potential audience, uh, any suggestions for how pastors can use the book mm. to sort of help close well, the gap question. between yeah. what people commonly think 
and what the Bible actually teaches? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that I tried to accomplish in the book was to, um, to have the book make connections that people are familiar with mm. and then draw them into a deeper understanding of that mm. which, with which they are actually familiar. So I give, I use quite a few hymns. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I use quite a few illustrations just from our normal cultural life and the cultural understanding of, mm -hmm. of things. And perhaps even uh, in sharing the songs that people are familiar mm -hmm. with, the, the hymns that we've been traditioned with mm -hmm. through the years, and then actually uh, engaging people and asking, well, no, what did that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what did it mean mm. when, when we sing, there is a fountain filled with blood right. drawn right. from Emmanuel's mm. veins, with sinner plunged beneath its flood, mm. lewd all our guilty mm. stain, yeah. you know. Well, we love that song. Yeah, sure. You yeah. know, but do we understand mm. what that means? Mm. Um, and I try to unpack that. And perhaps, you know, if nothing else, uh, a pastor or a Bible teacher or something could, ask, could talk about the songs that they're singing and then pull back and say, now let's examine what this song mm. is really teaching right. us, mm. and perhaps the book can be beneficial to them. Mm. In I mean, th this is great. I mean, in that sense, yeah. you're taking people from poetry to prose. Right. Um, Trying it's anyway. A, wow, it's, <laughs> a, it's a wonderful <laughs> volume. Yeah. Uh, it's readable, mm. uh, so it's the kind of size that pastors can mm. give to their people. Sure. Uh, you, you write, as you said before, with the congregation in mind, mm. so it's, it's winsome, it's mm. warm. Uh, I, I delight at reading uh, the manuscript for this, and so mm. Uh, maybe pastors can use this as a, a gift to new members or visitors. Um, could use it in the new membership class. Um, use it in their discipleship. So sure, get, yeah. get a bunch of copies yeah, and yeah. read it with the young guys in your church, man. Yeah. The ministers in your church. Because if we're going to preach the blood, we, we ought to know something well, about know the blood. Something about it. Right. Right. We're going to sing about, about the, blood. the blood. We ought to know what we're singing about. Sure. And here's the deal, man. <laughs> with a book like this, you're helping us be able to say what we sing. Yeah. And sometimes people can sing it, but they can't yeah, say it. it. Yeah. Um, and, and closing that gap between just singing and profession, yeah. uh, an informed profession, mm -hmm. is part of what makes the church healthy. Amen. Man. So Amen. I want to thank you again, brother, for thank you, writing man. this book, yeah. man, and serving the church and yeah. talking with us for a little bit about it. This is Anthony J. Carter and his new book, Blood Work, Blood Work. How the Blood of Christ Accomplishes Our Salvation. Praise God. Been on the front porch, <laughs> you know. Right.